Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Beloved viewers, I welcome you to this morning devotion with the Daily Fountain Devotional Guide of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. Let us pray. O oh God, in the face of trials, temptations, tribulations, terror, and persecution in today's world, enable us to be unmoved in the proclamation of the gospel in words and deeds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our topic today on this St. Stephen's Day is unmoved. Unmoved. While our text is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 54 to 60. It reads, When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their feet at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A church historian once wrote, that the blood of the saints was the seed of the gospel. This is true beginning with the early church in Jerusalem to churches in Asia, in Europe, in America, Africa, and other parts of the world. We are Christian believers and ministers are constantly persecuted and decimated by the infidels. In the face of trials and persecutions, some people abandon the Christian faith. They backslide and slip into apostasy. Yes, this is true. In a time of persecution, in a time of terror, in a time of trial, some Christians, especially the feeble ones, fall into apostasy. Some abandon their faith. Some backslide. And live 
the church. However, in our text today, Stephen was willing to suffer for the gospel. Stephen was not a quitter. For Stephen, it is not over until it is over. He was willing to suffer for the gospel. When he was attacked and persecuted, instead of being frightened, Stephen was unmoved and bold in his time of martyrdom. The persecution and the attack could not deter Stephen. He was resolute. He was strong in faith. He stood his ground in spite of the persecution. Stephen was not moved, even when threatened with death. According to our devotional guide today, Stephen was one of the seven deacons. He was one of the seven leaders or deacons chosen to care for widows in the early church. However, after that, Stephen understood that his calling was far more than that of settling food disputes. Originally, Stephen was appointed to be a deacon to cater for widows, to settle food disputes among the believers. But later, he understood that his calling was more than that. It extended to settling spiritual disputes as well into the lives of people. His calling was not just to settle food disputes, but to settle spiritual matters in the life of people. He went preaching the message of Jesus Christ. Preaching boldly, telling who Jesus is and how he fulfills the whole of the Old Testament. That was Stephen, preaching the gospel in addition to his primary assignment of settling food disputes. He went out preaching the gospel, preaching about Jesus Christ. Stephen had challenged the status quo and condemned the stubbornness, the indifference, and the rebellious attitude of the Jewish people to God's words and to the Holy Spirit. He challenged the status quo. He challenged their indifference. He challenged their rebellious lifestyle to the word of God and to the Holy Spirit. Hence he said, You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 51 to 52. That was how Stephen challenged the authorities. Challenged the stubbornness. He challenged the indifference and the rebellious life of the Jewish people. He called them stiff-necked people. Yes, even in today's church, there are stiff-necked people, people who will always rebel, who will always rebel against the truth, who will always rebel against the word of God, people who will always rebel against the authentic ministers of the gospel, people who do not want change, people who would Wished it to be as it were. 
But Stephen was able to challenge their rebellious life. This indictment did not go down well with the Jewish leaders. His word angered the Jewish leaders who had condemned Jesus to death for blasphemy. They did not take his words lightly. For them, what Stephen said was an indictment, was a challenge, was an affront to their authority. Hence, when the Jewish council of Sanhedrin heard Stephen's speech, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. The Bible said that they rushed him, dragged him out, and stoned him to death. Very unfortunate. Because Stephen was standing for the truth. Because Stephen was unmoved. Because Stephen was not ready to compromise with the truth. While Stephen was being stoned, he was bold, he was unshaken, and he was unmoved. Not minding the attack, not minding the threat. At times, we fall astray in the face of threat. At times when we are attacked, we feel weakened. We feel discouraged. But here is Stephen, who in the face of attack, who in the face of death, stood his ground and was able to defend the gospel. He was able to stand for Jesus, no matter the threat. As he was dying, Stephen asked God to forgive the very people who were killing him. This is very rare. It's very rare in today's world. What type of prayer do you make for those who persecute you? What type of prayer do you make for those who threaten you? What type of prayer do you make for your enemies? Some of us are used to the prayer of Holy Ghost fire against our enemies. But here, we need to learn from Stephen, who in the face of threats was able to pray even for his enemies. Stephen saw the heaven open with Christ standing at God's right hand, ready to receive him into his presence. If we do the will of God, if we stand for Jesus, he will be there to receive us, to encourage us at any time, at any day. He will never abandon us. Stephen saw heaven opening and he saw Christ. Jesus is ever there. No matter the situation, no matter what we are passing through, he is there watching us and ready to encourage and to receive us. Remember what he said in Matthew chapter 28. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Lo, I am with you till the end of the age. Beloved listener, we live in a world that is hostile to the children of God. We are faced with death threats. We are faced with persecutions, kidnapping, banditry, terrorism, and all forms of criminality every day and everywhere. Yes, just like in the days of Stephen, we are being faced with persecutions here and there. We are being faced with threats 
We are being kidnapped. There is banditry and kidnapping everywhere. Some of these things are targeted at the children of God. Jesus knew it. He knew it would be so. And encouraged us in his word when he said, In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheers. I have overcome the world. If Jesus overcame the world, we too we surely overcome. We must learn to be strong in faith. Even in the face of persecution. We must be firm and unmoved in times of trouble and trials of life. Like Stephen, we are not to fear persecution or death. We must not fear persecution or death. If we are truly in the Lord, if we are truly in the Lord, we will surely overcome. Remember what St. Paul said. St. Paul said, If God be for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Is it that witch? Is it that occultic man and occultic woman? If God be for us. Who can be against us? Our God is able to move us from our present trials to a state of triumph if we continue to trust him. Yes, our God is able. He is able to move us, to move you from your present trials to a state of triumph if you continue to trust him. Brethren, the Holy Spirit empowers us to be bold. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be unmoved when we are persecuted. Therefore, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, who alone gives the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit empowers us. He empowers us to be bold, and to be unmoved when we are persecuted. Therefore, you need this Holy Spirit to stand the test of time. You need the Holy Spirit to stand against the devil. You too can be unmoved. You too can be bold like Stephen if you have the Holy Spirit. Pray with me in this prayer. Lord God, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may be bold to testify of your goodness and salvation before all men through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 
also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNN TV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.